I wanted to follow up on the first class. And you talked about why to study theory. And I think this is a pretty good list. I think this is a list mostly things the class came up with. And then after class Wednesday, you filled in your registration surveys. And we see the majority of you are here totally under duress, despite that really good list of reasons to take theory. So I feel like I should say a little bit more, at least why I think you should take this class, even if you're not forced to. For those of you who are forced to, that I guess doesn't really have any direct impact on what you do because you're forced to take the class anyway. But hopefully you'll at least see the reasons why you're forced to take it. And, and I will admit that when I was forced to take a theory course, when I was you know, both an undergraduate and graduate in computer science, I also only took it because I was forced to and was very unhappy about being forced to take a theory course. Because most of us, at least many of us, get into computing because we want to we wanna hack cool code and build cool things and make stuff on computers. And the things that are done in theory are sort of the reason why we decided not to do math and did computer science instead. So I hope by the end of this class, or actually, yeah, not by the end of the semester, by somewhere during the semester, you will, if, if you're coming in from that perspective, you will at least see more value in actually learning theory. So let me give you my answer why everyone should take a theory of computation course. So the first answer to that is, this is the way to think bigger and better. By looking at problems from the perspective of theory, by thinking about things at the level of abstraction that we think about things in a theory course, you will be able to think bigger and think better and more ambitiously about everything you do. And I'll point to a, a recent talk that um, Leslie Lamport did. He's famous for the Paxos synchronization protocol. He's also responsible for the LaTeX typesetting system that you will be using. That's a, that's a useful practical contribution, not the reason he won the Turing Award. From, from the talk, he's talking about mathematical thinking. Um, and he has a quote from someone talking about TLA+, plus, which was one of the tools he developed to allow you to reason about systems in a formal way. And it's saying the, the real thing you should say is that you know, mathematical thinking as a skill is the thing that he found was most valuable. And it both changed how he works and changed how he thinks. So I think thinking about things from the theoretical perspective, even though most of you will not become theoreticians as your day job, is something that should be very valuable in how you think and work. The second answer is very subjective, but something that people who do work in math and work in theory will say there's intrinsic beauty in these things. It's hard to convince people that might not see it as intrinsically beautiful what that is, but hopefully you'll see some things in this class that you will find intrinsically beautiful. One of those, which is the pictures we won't talk about today, but is in chapter two of the book, and we will talk about next week is the the proof from Cantor using diagonalization. And the third answer is a correlation answer, that there, there seems to be a really strong impact in computing and a track record of people who've done work in theory having great impact and great success. This is not necessary causality. It's hard to know what causes success and whether it's just a coincidence. But if you look at many of the most successful computer scientists, as well as the most successful companies, they grew out of people working in theory much more than out of people working in systems relative to the number of people working in each. And I'll just mention one example. So this is from a theoretical computer science paper. Does anyone recognize this definition? Yeah, so this is PageRank. This is the paper that led to Google. The start of it, it's all about a definition. It's not that they came up with some better algorithm. It's not that they came up with better code or better system design. What led to what I think is arguably the most formidable and, and terrifying in, in many ways company in the history of mankind was a better definition. There were some other bumps along the way that were necessary for Google to get where it is now, but it all started with coming up with a better definition. I mean, definitely both Sergey Brin and Larry Page were working in theory groups and came from a, a theory background. Sergey's degree was actually math with computer science, not a computer science degree. Hopefully those reasons will at least make a case why this is a required class, and hopefully you will find value in it.